It's the Live Music Showcase on WMNF in Tampa. I'm Bill Dudley. I'll be your host today. And uh, for the next 55, we've got some great live music. Coming to you live from the Mike Eisenstadt Performance Studio here at WMNF in Tampa. You can be watching us on Facebook at LMS WMNF. You can watch us live as it's happening. Our guest today, Chuck Brodsky, a great singer-songwriter. He's been on our show several times before. Haven't seen him for a couple of years, so we're happy to have him back. Nice to see Welcome you. Welcome back, Chuck. Let's start off with a song. All right. Lefties in the miners got his shoulder packed in ice, and he's trying to hang on there against all that good advice. He used to throw that sinker, but that sinker ball went south. Then they started calling him for going to his mouth Lefty holds the record for most strikeouts in a game Once upon a time, he really threw a ball of flame Some wish he'd gone gracefully when his time finally came And they put Lefty on waivers Nobody laid a claim, and it's got almighty shame. He got too old to play the game. Where well, made himself a name, and I call him Lefty. Lefty wore the pinstripes for a good number of years. Bleacher bums all loved him, they were tanked up in their beer. He used to throw that heater. The radar does not lie And when the lefty lays one up there You can't kiss that thing goodbye It's got almighty shame He got too old to play the game Where well, he made himself a name And they call him lefty Now they're calling him From Cooperstown Out on the bullpen phone Some little feet in bum folk where the grass is overgrown it's the bottom of the seventh and a runner just got on and now they're calling for a lefty but lefty's not the one there's a capital l in lefty so say it with respect He's saying you're lefty down in Mexico and he's lefty in Quebec. He could smoke you, he could fool you, throw a curve around your neck. He could paint one on the corners, he could fill the upper deck. It's a god almighty shame, he got too old to play the game. Where well, made himself a name, I call him lefty. Got too old to play the game. Well, made himself a name, call him a lefty. Chuck Brodsky, our guest on today's live music showcase from WMNF, and that's a baseball song. I should have warned him. I should have said, hey, this guy is the world's greatest singer-songwriter of baseball songs, among other things that he does, of course. Not all baseball songs. So you're down here for uh, for baseball yep. in the Bay Area, and uh, you come down here every year, hang out, go to some games. Yeah, I love it. I, I've been doing this for I think the last 12 or 13 years. My dad's been doing it for... 25 or 30 years coming down from Philadelphia <laughs> and watching that the where Phillies. You grew up? Yeah. So we're both uh, big time Phillies fans. And about 12 years or so ago, my dad invited me to start joining him. And uh, so we go, we see about a week's worth of games. And then, in addition to that, every year I like to play in uh, St. Pete at the Craftsman House. Yeah. And sometimes I even stick around long enough to go to opening day at 
the at the trop. Mm. It sounds good. But it's like a working vacation, you know. I I look forward to this all year. Yeah, yeah. Well, the weather's great here right now. Yeah. And uh, you know, yeah. last year when I left, it was 16 degrees at my house up in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And three and a half hours later, driving through Georgia, it was 90 degrees. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> That's a pretty wide divergence, I'd say. Wow. Well, the weather's perfect right now. This is the best time to come to Florida, I think. That's ideal. Yeah. And I guess you've been on our show maybe, I don't know, five or six times, four or five times at least. At least. And uh, you're going to be at the Craftsman House tomorrow night. Yeah. And... Uh, have you been, tell, bring us up to date. I'm not sure whether you were on the show last year or you missed a year, uh, whether it was last year or the year before that, but what's new? What's new? Um, some songs, uh, new songs. Other than that, uh, oh, this is cool. I'm being inducted into the Philadelphia Jewish Sports Hall of Fame, April 30th. And Jewish Sports Hall of Fame? Yeah. What did you have to do to do that? to get that to, uh, well, cha- uh, it's to for receive my, that honor it's for all the baseball songs I've written over the years I, I think I'm up to 24 baseball songs but uh, this is an organization that has recognized a lot of very very famous athletes and uh, management people from the various sports teams in Philadelphia one of the fellow inductees um, on April 30th is the general manager of the Philadelphia Eagles so uh-huh. you know, I'm, I'm an, an incredible company, and I never saw this coming. And <laughs> <laughs> I still can't believe it's true. But, yeah, I'm going to be inducted into the well, that Philadelphia great. Jewish Sports Hall of Fame. All right. Chuck Brodsky is our guest on today's show, folks. And let's let him do another tune. All right. This is a brand-new song that uh, I have never sung for anybody before. It's a, it's a story. Let me just this note there was orange on the radar in some places it was red you saw it on the TV well he was still in bed Room service brought him breakfast Some good coffee as well He could get used to staying At a major league hotel It was raining hard that morning The whole day it was Just stare out the window From the 27th floor The night before at supper Some joint in Buffalo The skipper called to tell him show text messages and emails were lighting up his phone from all his friends and family everyone he'd ever known his folks flew in from Boston wife just made her flight They all got there the next day To see him pitch that night He put his big league pants on And he tied his big league shoes 
cabal of believers were giving interviews. His name was in the lineup. He was mentioned on the news. He knocked around a dozen years for this. Veracruz They went out through the tunnel To stand on a big lake mound His tears mixed with the raindrops He felt like he might drown Squeezed the big league baseball Ran his fingers along the seams The rain was cruel and stung him As it washed away his dreams And it was flooded in the dugout It was a lonely place to sit He thought of going to Korea Maybe it was time to quit And now next time they need a pitcher They'll probably call up some kid time thereafter That's exactly what they did That tarp was never lifted And the storm never let up It's like he got his cup of coffee coffee cup They let him keep his jersey The box gets soaking wet and That was as close to the majors As he would ever get You can say that's baseball Especially if he never played For the guy who worked his ass off And whose dues were overpaid It's been all about this moment Ever since the seventh grade Congratulations were in order But condolences were paid No, that tarp was never lifted And the storm never let up Like he got his cup of coffee Without a coffee cup Sad song Sad story Chuck Brodsky, our guest on today's live music showcase here from WMNF Mark Perfetti mixing it up today Assisted by Richard Stone We've got our great live music TV crew, and you know you can watch us live on Facebook right now. Just go to Facebook, type in LMS WMNF. And Nick Sarasi is also in the house helping on audio today. I forgot to write his name down. Sorry about that, Nick. Glad to have you here. Uh, we've got our great TV crew. We've got uh, Jane Goldie on camera. We have Marcy and Tom Connors on camera. Bob Hoke directs this whole program. 
and we are happy to have all the folks here helping out on the Live Music Showcase. We really look forward to Fridays because we get to do this show, mm -hmm. and some of the great folks we've had on lately have been really great. So, anyway, um, our, our lost my train of thought. Somebody said something to me in the headphones. Uh, the Live Music Showcase happens every Friday afternoon here on WMNF in Tampa. And you can also watch it later on tonight or tomorrow on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, courtesy of Dr. Stone. He'll be preparing the show and putting it up on YouTube, putting titles on all the tunes and everything. So, baseball songs here are the order of today, at least the first two songs from <laughs> Chuck Brodsky, our guests, <laughs> guest on the show today. Do you have any new albums, any recent albums you need to mention? Uh, my most recent album came out about a year ago. Okay, well, that's recent. It's called Demenos. Uh huh. And I thought I'd play the title track. That well, that, song that's is. great. Can they get a hold of, can they find you at Chuck, chuckbrodsky.com? Yeah, that's the best way. There are literally. B R O D S K Y? Yeah. There's literally one store. In the entire world. No, there are two stores in the entire world that sell my CDs. <laughs> one is in uh, <laughs> Reading, Pennsylvania, and one is in uh, Nova Scotia. So the only way to get them really is <laughs> through me or CD Baby or some of those other online. This offer absolutely not available in stores. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the East to say that. Okay, you're going to do the title tune? Yeah, it's called Them and Us. Stand off all across the great divide with friends and family members on both sides. Someone struck a match, the wood combust, scorching everyone. Dirty words and disrespect is not having any positive effect. The bridges have collapsed because of rust. But we can't reach each other, them and us. Our earplugs in and our blinders on And we wonder where have all the flowers gone Where once there was a garden cool and lush All that's left here now is them and us And I've never lonely in this world as I do when all those banners are unfurled and the airwaves are just spewing all that stuff about us and them look what it's done to us our differences are few and overblown and it sometimes leads to punches being thrown there seems to be a few things to discuss but you can't say a word to them or us we write them off because of how they vote we write them off cause they came on a boat and we turn our backs with contempt and with disgust whatever about them is not like us we identify them by clothes they wear, we 
identify them by their skin and hair. And we look for any reason not to trust whatever about them is not like us. And I've never felt so lonely in this world as I do when all those banners are unfurled. And the airwaves are just spewing all that stuff about us and them. Look what it's done to us. Thoughtful, decent people turning mean. Gods could intervene. There must be some controls they could adjust. Maybe they could make us whole, them and us. And I've never felt so lonely in this world as I do when all those banners are unfurled in the airwaves are just spewing all that stuff about us and them look what it's done to us there's a standoff all across the great divide Chuck Brodsky, that's your political song. That's not political. I don't think that's. I don't think of it as political. Really? Okay. I think it's just uh, telling. Kind of what's what happening. Is. Kind of what's happening. The way it is. Okay. Chuck Brodsky is our guest on today's live music showcase, folks from WMNF in Tampa. We're happy to have him back here. Chuck, uh, it's got a unique style, a unique way of writing his song poems, and. Uh, it's like you never are mistaken. Uh, I mean, if you heard Chuck Brodsky's song, you always know that's what it is because of the the rhythm, I guess you would say. Huh? How no. did you first, and, and that's what I mean to ask you about, how did you f first get into writing these short rhyming lines that you write? I guess they call them stanzas or couplets or whatever in the poetry world. I mean, it's your style, and it's and it's it's kind of unique. I think when I was uh, college age, listening to songwriters and thinking about um, you know the direction I wanted to go with the music, some of the early Bob Dylan stuff was uh, really made an impact on me. Actually, um, I was about five or six years old when uh, I got passed along a Bob Dylan record. Which one was it? It was Greatest Hits Volume 2. Okay. And I fell in love with that kind of music. I fell in love with that particular record. Um, not understanding it, of course, but it just did something on a, on a it sank into my bones just hmm. on an organic level. Was it his voice? Was it his, was it the, what, what, the words, the music? It was everything. It was, it just all washed over me. It was a style that really um, resonated. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to really explain it, but um, then I really, a, as a teenager and as a, a young adult, I, I really got into his his songs more. Um, and early on in his career, he, he, he did sing a lot of songs with really long verses that just, uh, it's not that they meandered, but you know, he, he showed me that the, you can do that. You know, even though the industry says you have to keep your songs to three minutes and oh, this and yes, that. Yes, yes. Um, well, in those days, it was because of the commercials on AM radio. Songs had to be two minutes and 30 seconds on average. And, 
but you know we don't have that anymore. <laughs> There's no music on AM radio now, I guess. And no, and I think I think uh, commercial and pop music stopped appealing to me, um, you know, at at a very young age, mm -hmm. and um, the idea of these old English ballads and Irish Irish songs, you know that that had long, they, they were stories, mm -hmm. and they were long. Yeah. And verse after verse after verse, where it wasn't important mm -hmm. that the music didn't change that much. The right. chords could keep cycling through. It was all about telling a story. And I never really thought of myself as a storyteller, per se, through the years until fairly recently, because other people were calling me that. And then I just realized, yeah, that is what I do. And I don't need to really uh, pretend I don't or apologize for it. I, I tell stories. I, uh -huh. write, I write songs that are stories. I tell stories. It's an older, uh, you know, it's a, it's a timeless art form. It's it may not be as much in vogue as it once was, but it's well, what it, I do. It goes back to the to the medieval days when the people carried the news by exactly. songs and the, exactly. the troubadours that ro roamed around Europe, and probably a bunch of other places as well. The tradition of the of the uh, itinerant, the bard, and singer the, of songs, yeah. Yeah. giving us the news. Exactly. <laughs> and I'd never heard the two story songs that she started off the show with. I'd never heard either of those two stories, and they were quite fascinating. I mean, you know, the one was sad. The one was the other one was sort of sad too. But well, that second one is actually based on a. a it's it, it's literally based on a on a guy named Brian Mazzone, who was in the Phillies system, and the Phillies called him up for uh, a spot start. One of the pitchers couldn't pitch, and. Uh, Unfortunately, that's what really happened. It rained. Rained, and their game was the game called. Was called, and he never got called up again to the major leagues, ever. Yeah, yeah. But hmm. it happens. You know, it's a sad story, but it happens. It's part of real life. Yeah. Not every, not every story is, uh, not every story in real life is a guy signing a three hundred thirty million dollar <laughs> contract. You know, some guys don't make it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was in the news from one of uh, one of your players, I guess, right? Uh, w was he a Phillies player? This guy, I—I I mean, I'm, I don't a Philly follow now. sports. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. three hundred and thirty million bucks. Whoa. Well, anyway, Chuck Brodsky is our guest on today's show, and this is WMNF. If you really enjoy the show, try checking out our website, WMNF.org. You can listen to the show again on audio, the audio portion of it, and you can also make a contribution to live music if you want to do so. We've got the tip jar right there. Just click on that and uh, make your uh, make your tax deductible contribution to keep live music and live radio like this on the air. We think it's a great thing, and if you do too, let's hear from you. Yeah. So what's next? Um, song from my most recent CD as well. It's called "Couldn't Do What Daddy Done." <laughs> Supremacist friends are only doing what God intends Burning crosses, burning mosques, vandalizing synagogues We're the patriotic sons with our semi-automatic guns Prepping for a civil war to make things like they was before Me and my supremacist clan, this is how we take our stand Underneath a Nazi flag, marching right up the main drag, past the church, past the school, where they teach the golden rule, where the children play outside, when we go by they run and hide. The secret handshake makes you kin, at the door it gets you in. It's how we tell a friend from foe, it's something only we would know. I'm 
Mrs. Bud Stare each other's thirst for blood Get in drunker by the hour Mixing things that all taste sour Till we can't control the rage Any excuse to open the cage Cannot stay inside the house The beast is foaming at the mouth His dad one time beat a foreigner bad He was somewhere he shouldn't have been He shouldn't have been with his colored skin And after daddy kicked his ass And left him lying in the grass I got some of my own licks in He was somewhere he shouldn't have been The secret handshake makes you kin At the door, it gets you in How we tell a friend from foe it's something only we would know Me and my 12 year old son one time made a fire to run Chased him down a dead end street until the circle was complete there was nowhere that he could run but i couldn't do what my daddy done not in front of my own son i couldn't do what daddy done the secret handshake makes you can at the door and gets you in How we tell a friend from forward something only we would know. Secret handshake makes you can at the door, it gets you in. It's how we tell a friend from forward something only we would know. song. Chuck Brodsky, our guest on today's live music showcase here from WMNF. I'm Bill Dudley. That was a great song. Kept me guessing there. Mm. I didn't know what point of view you were going to take and then, huh. You know, what's funny is that uh, I'm not sure I did either when I wrote, when I started writing it. And literally, the morning that I recorded it, Almost as I was walking out the door, the idea came for that last verse to be different. Yeah. Instead of him doing what his daddy had done, which was originally how I had written it. Oh, really? Yeah, all of a sudden it occurred to me, literally as I was walking out the door, and I, I rewrote that, that final verse to oh, make man. a turn. What like a feeling did. that must have been to where you took a song that was just one way and made it a whole... Honestly, whole, I think... Whole turnaround. I think in my entire writing career that's my favorite thing that's ever happened to me wow yeah because because of it, it's just so so meaningful and so powerful at least to me it is and oh yeah and no i think you're absolutely i can't right. assume i can't presume that other people will react like you did but you know i i just know as a writer um, when something like that happens i i know i hit my mark and i i just feel really good about that mm. Great song. Thank you. Chuck Brodsky, our guest on today's show. He's appearing at uh, Craftsman House Gallery tomorrow night. He's in town, going to some baseball games, hanging out in the sunshine. <laughs> and we, might, we might get a little rain this weekend, but I think it's going to be generally nice it's when okay you're here. because they'll probably get a little snow where I live. <laughs> so I'll take a little rain. You can check him out at Chuck, chuckbrodsky.com, B-R-O-D-S-K-Y is how he spells his last name. And uh, this is the Live Music Showcase from WMNF. We do it every Friday afternoon. Mark Perfetti is responsible for the sound of our show today, doing a great job. And he is assisted by Tommy Mark. Guy's name. 
Nick Sarasi. Yeah, I didn't write that down. In fact, I don't have my cheat sheet here. I don't know what to do. And uh, Richard Stone helping out with the audio. Uh, Dr. Stone also will get this program up on YouTube later on tonight or tomorrow sometime. You'll be able to watch it again in brilliant 3D color. You can watch it right now, the rest of it, the last 15 minutes on Facebook if you want to. Our show is always streamed live on Facebook. And we'd like to say hats off to our great video crew. We've got Jane Goody, Marcy and Tom Connors on cameras, Bob Hoke, our director. So when you, when you play, do you look at your audience, try to gauge what songs you think you can do? Songs, happy songs, sad songs, story songs, or do you just forge ahead? Uh, you know, uh, until a couple of years ago, I never made set lists, so that is exactly what I used to do. But I ended up overlooking a lot of songs that I really should should play, just because they didn't come to mind in the moment. Mm. And I'd, I'd finish the night and realize, oh man, I didn't play that should one. Should have done I didn't so. That so. One. Yeah. so I make set lists now. Um, and I just, I try to be aware, I try to just feel out the situation before the show and, uh, you know, some, some, some events don't call for, uh, much politics at all and others maybe it'd be a bit, a bit more appropriate. Other, other occasions might, uh, call for some funnier songs or some baseball songs. So I do try to be aware of where I am and who I'm singing for. It's not my intention to upset anybody or send anybody home feeling like, uh, you know, they, they feeling upset for, for, for uh, what they heard. I'm not, I'm not there to challenge people uh, in a personal way, but you know, truth is the truth and I, <laughs> I'm dedicated to it. And I can't help myself sometimes. I, I I feel like I need to play consciousness raising songs. But okay. I don't think of them as political. You know, some people might call some of my songs political. I don't think I take sides. Yeah. I think I just point out um, what is. And I try to do so with some sensitivity. And I often like to use irony and humor to make my point. It's more effective that way mm. because otherwise you alienate people that don't share your point of view much quicker. Well, you said Bob Dylan was, was a great inspiration to you as far as your singing and your verses and things like that. What other influences, uh, books, things that you've read in, over the years, movies or anything like Mark that? Mark Twain was a huge influence on really? me for one thing, yeah. Ah. Um, in, in terms of... Talking about humor, irony. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's probably the most brilliant writer I've ever come across in any genre. What's your favorite book or favorite books? I can't even begin to... Oh, my God. I loved Roughing It in particular. Yeah, that's uh, my favorite Mark Twain book, actually. I love his Adam and Eve diaries, but I, I'm a huge fan of his short stories. Uh -huh. uh, I, I might like his short stories even more than I like his novels. But he was a huge influence. Um, you mentioned, you alluded to uh, the rhythmic nature of some of my songs, and, and Steve Forbert was actually a huge influence on mm. me. I saw him as an 18-year-old for the first time, back before they, fo they forced him to tour with the band, mm. and things, his sound got a little watered down, I thought, with, with some of the electric instruments. But as a one-man, one, you know, one human on stage, he was an absolute dynamo. And I'd never seen anything like that, the percussiveness of, of a guitar player mm -hmm. like that. And, and so that, that was a, a, at a very impressionable age that I saw that, and, and it really affected me. He, he more so than almost anybody else I could think of. Huh. I was going to ask you <coughs> about, uh, you know, your some of the some of the the ideas and the way you the way you present your stuff but i think you just answered my question about what you want to do you want what you want to accomplish is to make people think reflect you know stir them up a little bit yeah but also entertain and and i want people to walk away feeling fulfilled i want people to enjoy themselves at my shows i'm not there to make anybody have a bad time yeah you know i'm not i, I don't attack people for their views if they're different than mine i i, I try 
very hard to be all inclusive. And you know, it's interesting. My audience, and particularly in the South, is very split down the middle. I have an equal number of people that like my music who lean left, as I do. People who lean right, and you know, I think for two hours we can all sit in the same room together and have a nice time. Mm-hmm. That's what it's really all about. Yeah. It's. I, I really truly believe that the things that separate us, the differences that separate us, are. It's significant compared to the things that we have in common. Yeah, yeah. So. Chuck Brodsky is our guest. Let's have another song, if okay. you don't mind. I've been working on uh, a series of Holocaust story songs. Hmm. And through the years, I've recorded several. I think six of them are out on CDs already. But my intention is to ultimately put them all on one CD, like I did with the baseball albums. Hmm. And this one here is about a fellow known as the Paris Forger. His real name is Adolfo Kaminsky. Um, last I heard, about six months ago, he was still alive at the age of 93 in Paris. Wow. But he was, uh, he forged documents and passports during World War II that enabled thousands upon thousands of people to escape the Nazis and, and gain their freedom. So. <laughs> On the third floor I used to rent a room Got no fresh air You could get dizzy From the fumes I'd spend the nights in there Maybe I'd sleep a few weeks Clear a place somewhere Between the papers And the inks I had a printing press It was my Tommy gun I dreamed I'd ambush them Whenever it would run I couldn't shoot a man This was what I could do With my documents The guards would have waved them through I didn't know them I never met them How could I turn away and just forget them I still can picture some of their faces they were desperate to leave for safer places I was an artisan a counterfeiter I had a steady hand but didn't get the jitter One day the partisans told me my skills were needed Cause there was madness on the rise that had to be defeated I doctored names, altered their ages Put a different place of birth upon the pages I made them businessmen I made them teachers I made them someone else With all the same features I didn't know them I never met them How could I turn away And just forget them I still can picture Some of their faces Desperate to leave for safer places. I'd meet my handler in busy cafes. We would trade envelopes, then go our separate ways. No time for small talk Too many lives at stake Passports to reproduce All night I'd be awake I worked in secrecy Nobody knew of this Not even my daughter or my wife There 
was just too much risk They said I worked too much I couldn't tell them why But now I have to tell someone before I die I didn't know them I never met them How could I turn away And just forget them I still can picture Some of their faces They were desperate to leave For safer places I didn't know them I never met them How could I turn away And just forget them I still can picture some of their faces Great song from Chuck Brodsky. He's our guest on today's live music showcase here. You've got a bunch of CDs out, some baseball CDs. I have two of them. Yeah. How many overall? Twelve. And you've been doing this for a few years. I think you told me twenty-six. Twenty-six years full time. Yeah. Yeah. Was that a big? Was that a big uh, step out when when you decided to go full time with it? picking and singing I mean well it was it was it was what I had geared myself for all along but um, I never wanted to go out into the world with my songs and and only have you know be a one-trick pony so to speak I wanted to feel like I had two entire sets worth of material that I believed in mm -hmm. I didn't want to I didn't want to have a few songs I really liked and a bunch of weak ones, and because I knew they were weren't as strong, you know. So I just I just kind of waited until um, I felt like I would be seasoned enough, and you know, that day could also never come, you know. Mm. To if you think about it in a certain way, and I was 31 years old. Were you doing a day job? I was doing a day job. Uh, all the day jobs I did through the years were fairly um, meaningless in terms. Uh, I didn't have any connection to them. I didn't have to take them home at the end of the day. Uh, a lot of delivery jobs that had me out and about and free so that I wasn't, uh, wasn't sitting in an office or answering to people. I had my mind free, and I was writing often, you know, pull over if I had an idea right during my lunch break. But I was always gearing up towards a day when I thought I might be good enough. And that day might never have come. I actually remember hmm. starting to feel like, man, you're 31 years old and you don't have the first clue how to take the plunge. How do you give up the security of a job? How do you give up the security of medical benefits? And next thing I knew, I was flying over the handlebars of a motorcycle and uh, was was pretty badly injured and, and was on disability. I had a couple surgeries and so I was on disability for a year and then they had to fill my job so I was on unemployment for a bit after that. By the time I was really healed and, and, and raring to go, I thought, well, you know, I don't have a job anymore. <laughs> and <laughs> I, uh, I got in touch with one of my songwriting heroes, Pierce Pettis. Oh yeah. Pierce, Pierce was a real mentor. He lives up in North Carolina, doesn't he? He's in uh, Alabama, North Alabama. Okay. But um, Pierce was somebody that took a real shine to me early on and uh, was always encouraging. So I emailed him and I said, Pierce, how many gigs do you think a person needs to have to go out and do a tour? And he wrote back and he said, one. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, here goes. <laughs> and I never, never turned back. Did you have more than one that first year? Well, the first little tour I did was um, sort of based around my sister's wedding in Vermont. I had been invited. Uh, I was at the Kerrville Folk Festival that same year. And again, this was, 
I had no idea where I stood in the world of songwriters because I had never gone out publicly. I was playing the same open mics every week in the San Francisco Bay Area, and it was really hard to gauge because you know, everybody, everybody was so self-absorbed at the open mics that <laughs> they didn't really let you know, wow, you know, that song's great, or wow, I love what you're doing. They just all kind of ho-hummed to each other's stuff. And, <laughs> and it, so there I go to the Kerrville Folk Festival for the very first time. I'm sitting around campfires singing my songs, and people are really reacting in ways that I was not accustomed to. And a woman came up to me and told me she booked a coffee house in New Hampshire and asked how often, do, how often I tour New England. And I was thinking, wow, you know, people who book <laughs> venues think I'm uh, on that level, so maybe I ought to give it a go. And so I contacted that very woman when I knew I was going to be flying out to Vermont for my sister's wedding, and I, di I did that, and I think she helped me get a second show somewhere. So I did two on that first tour, and by January, that was in the fall, by January I went off on a real bona fide driving road trip cross-country and... I pretty much booked all the gigs that uh, my buddies in a in a San Francisco Bay Area band called City Folk had played. I was on their mailing list. I had their card. I had all the all the and the rest it, is hysteria. The list of the game, uh, list of the venues, and the phone numbers. And I called them all and I said, "Hi, I'm a friend of City Folks." And uh, that's wondered. great. That's great. Wow, Chuck yeah. Brodsky, our guest on today's Live Music Showcase, folks. Chuck, we got about. Uh, Four minutes. Mm -hmm. And you've got a long song you can do. Yeah. I'll do so, the one that we talked about earlier that well, you let's, like. Let's, uh, let's sign off with this. It's been great having great you on the, great on the here. show. And we'll look forward to when you come back. Thank you. Oh, can I, am I allowed to mention the fact that I do tours to Ireland? Yeah. I do. I lead group tours to Ireland. My 2019 tours are sold out. One of my 2020 tours has sold out, but I do have a few rooms left, three rooms left for my one of my other 2020 tours. It's April 14th to the 24th, and all that information can be found at chuckbrodsky.com. All right. There we go. So this is a song that was assigned to me to write at a songwriter retreat. Like those 
they have their charms Red flags, loud alarms I loved it when they were in my arms And I swear my love was true Now it takes a little more Turn me on than it did before Certain things I can't ignore Certain things I do Shirts and drawstring pants who bang on drums and don't eat meat and walk around in their bare feet. With girls like that, it wouldn't last. Not even one half minute passed. The moment that the clock struck twelve, they'd leave me dancing with myself. Opposites at times attract like chemicals, they can react. Appealed to me Now don't seem so real to me Girls like those They have their charms Red flags and loud alarms I loved it when they were in my arms And I swear my love was true Now it takes a little more To turn me on than it did before Certain things I can't ignore Certain things I do